Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're diving into a fascinating topic that I know sounds too crazy to be true, countries that offer financial incentives for marrying their women. Now before we get started, I want to acknowledge that this is a complicated issue and we're going to approach it with the nuance and sensitivity it deserves. We're not endorsing any of these policies but rather exploring them as a lens through which we can understand the demographic and social challenges these countries are facing. So buckle up, because we're about to embark on a journey that will take us from the rolling hills of Italy to the bustling streets of Tokyo, all in the name of love, marriage, and government subsidies. Let's go! Our first stop takes us to Italy a land renowned for its delicious pasta, passionate people, and some villages eager to grow. Italy has been grappling with a declining birth rate. This shift has hit rural regions hard, leading to shrinking communities. To combat this, towns offer cash bonuses to couples who settle down. These incentives can range from a few thousand to tens of thousands of euros. It's like a romantic comedy, with a mayor holding a giant check. One example is Santo Stefano di Sassanio offering 10,000 euros to couples. The catch? One partner must be under 40 and stay for five years. Desperate times call for creative measures, right? These programs highlight the challenges rural communities face. And who knows, maybe they'll lead to a few love stories along the way. Next up, we're hopping over to the land of the rising sun, where the demographic situation is, well, a little less sunny. Japan has one of the lowest birth rates in the world, and its population is aging rapidly. This has led to a whole host of economic and social concerns, from labor shortages to a shrinking tax base. The Japanese government has been trying to encourage people to get married and have more children for years, but so far, nothing seems to be working. One of the main problems is that the cost of living in Japan is incredibly high, especially in big cities like Tokyo and Osaka. Raising children is expensive anywhere, but it's particularly challenging in Japan where education and housing costs can be astronomical. On top of that, Japanese work culture is notoriously demanding, with long hours and a strong emphasis on company loyalty. This leaves many young people feeling like they simply don't have the time or energy to date, let alone get married and start a family. To address these challenges, the Japanese government has implemented a number of policies aimed at making it easier for people to get married and have children. These include things like subsidized childcare, tax breaks for families, and even government-sponsored matchmaking events. However, these efforts have had limited success so far. Many young people in Japan are simply too disillusioned with the traditional path of marriage and family to be swayed by government incentives. Our third stop takes us to France, a country known for its romantic ambiance, delectable cuisine, and a certain je ne sais quoi that makes it a popular destination for lovers around the world. But even in the land of love, sometimes a little extra encouragement is needed to get those wedding bells ringing. Like many other developed nations, France has seen its birth rate decline in recent decades, prompting the government to implement various policies aimed at supporting families. While France doesn't have a nationwide program specifically offering cash incentives for marriage, it does provide a range of financial benefits and tax breaks for married couples and families with children. These benefits are designed to ease the financial burden of raising a family and encourage couples to have more children. One of the key elements of France's family-friendly policies is its generous system of family allowances. These allowances, known as allocations familial, are paid out monthly to families with at least two children, regardless of their income. The amount of the allowance increases with the number of children in the family, providing significant financial support to larger families. In addition to family allowances, France also offers tax breaks for families with children, making it more financially advantageous for couples to be married and have children. These tax breaks can significantly reduce a family's overall tax burden, freeing up more income to support their children's education, health care, and other needs. While these policies might not be as direct as offering cash bonuses for marriage, they nonetheless demonstrate France's commitment to supporting families and encouraging population growth. Our next stop takes us to Russia, the largest country in the world, spanning 11 time zones and encompassing a rich tapestry of cultures and landscapes. But despite its vastness, Russia, like many other nations, is facing a demographic challenge, a declining population. To address this issue, the Russian government has implemented a number of policies aimed at boosting the country's birth rate, including financial incentives for marriage and childbirth. 
One of the key initiatives is the Maternity Capital Program, which provides a significant cash payment to women who give birth to or adopt a second or subsequent child. This payment, which is currently over 480,000 rubles, approximately $6,400, can be used for a variety of purposes, including improving housing conditions, investing in the child's education, or supplementing the mother's pension. In addition to the maternity capital program, Russia also offers a range of other benefits for families with children, such as monthly child allowances, tax deductions, and subsidized childcare. These measures are designed to ease the financial burden of raising a family and encourage couples to have more children. While the effectiveness of these policies in reversing Russia's demographic decline remains to be seen, they highlight the government's recognition of the importance of supporting families and promoting population growth. Our journey now takes us to Spain, a country known for its vibrant culture, passionate flamenco dancing, and delicious tapas. But beneath the surface of this lively nation lies a demographic concern, a declining and aging population, particularly in rural areas. To combat this trend, some regions in Spain have implemented innovative programs offering financial incentives for couples to marry and settle down within their borders. These incentives, while not as widespread as in some other countries we've explored, highlight the challenges faced by certain communities and their creative attempts to revitalize their populations. One example is the village of Ponga, located in the northern region of Asturias. This picturesque village, nestled amidst stunning mountain scenery, made headlines a few years ago when it offered a 3,000 euro bonus to couples who got married and moved there. The catch? They had to commit to staying for at least three years and starting a family. While the financial incentive might seem modest, it reflects the desire of these communities to attract young families and breathe new life into their aging populations. These programs, while not a nationwide solution, offer a glimpse into the demographic challenges faced by certain regions in Spain and their efforts to find creative ways to address them. Our penultimate stop takes us to Finland, a country renowned for its stunning natural beauty, innovative education system, and consistently high rankings in global happiness surveys. But even in this Nordic paradise, demographic concerns have prompted some interesting policy decisions. Like many developed nations, Finland has seen its birth rate decline in recent decades, leading to concerns about an aging population and its potential impact on the country's future prosperity. While Finland doesn't offer direct financial incentives for marriage, it does provide a comprehensive system of social support for families with children, which some argue indirectly encourages marriage. One of the cornerstones of Finland's family-friendly policies is its generous parental leave system, which allows both mothers and fathers to take extended time off work to care for their children. This system, combined with affordable high-quality childcare, makes it easier for parents in Finland to balance work and family life. While these policies are not specifically designed to incentivize marriage, they create an environment where couples feel supported in having and raising children, which could indirectly lead to more marriages. Our final stop on this global exploration of marriage incentives takes us to Portugal, a country known for its beautiful coastline, melancholic fado music, and a rich history shaped by exploration and discovery. Like many other European nations, Portugal has been grappling with a declining birth rate and an aging population. To address these demographic challenges, the Portuguese government has implemented a number of policies aimed at supporting families and encouraging couples to have more children. While Portugal doesn't offer direct financial incentives for marriage, it does provide a range of tax benefits and social support programs for families with children. These benefits are designed to ease the financial burden of raising a family and create a more favorable environment for couples to have more children. One of the key elements of Portugal's family-friendly policies is its system of child tax credits. These credits, which are available to all families with children, regardless of their marital status, can significantly reduce a family's overall tax burden. In addition to child tax credits, Portugal also offers a range of other benefits for families, such as subsidized childcare, free education, and monthly child allowances. These measures are designed to make it easier for families to make ends meet and provide their children with a good start in life. Thanks for sticking with me on this whirlwind tour of countries and their approaches to marriage and population growth. It's been a fascinating journey, exploring the diverse ways that governments around the world are grappling with demographic challenges and trying to find solutions. 
from cash bonuses in small Italian villages to comprehensive social support systems in Scandinavian countries, we've seen a wide range of approaches, each with its own set of motivations and potential outcomes. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Until next time, stay curious.